Hey everyone, Genome here, coming at you from... Yeah. Hey everyone, Genome here, coming at you with a quick A-OK -okay unboxing. I was on the receiving end of yet another great little gift. Well, I'm gonna assume it's great, but we know it's great coming from the comic book community, right? It was actually a multi-tiered gift. I was expecting one of these things, and the other was an addition. So this one comes, of course, from the amazing Funk Comics 814, uh, the artist other formerly known as Ralph. So, Ralphie boy, thank you, thank you. So the very first thing we got here is what I expected. Bag of super hot peppers from the gardens of his uh, majesty of, of heat, Ralph himself. Um... Lurking within here is some California Reapers, too, so... <laughs> May God have mercy on my palate. It must be... warm. So, those will be going in the ground next year to see if we can bear hot fruit. So, awesome stuff there. Really appreciate that. Also included with the package was this, which I have not yet opened. Wanted to do it on, on air, so hopefully there's nothing green in there. Because <laughs> my... Setup is still going, but let's just cut into this thing, shall we? Right. What treasures lurk within? Aha! We have another CD. Let's see if I have the other one that features our friend Ralph on base. I think I put it away. But, anyway, we have... Jeff Letterman, Southern Sun. So we'll have to uh, get some songs on that one as well. And take a listen. Awesome, awesome. Thank you. Bold Badger Mystery Seeds. What lies within? More hot peppers? They all look like pepper seeds to me. Oh man, there's a lot of stuff to grow. Next year, I'll have to skip and eschew the uh, tomato garden completely. And uh, just go with peppers. It's just gonna be a pepper farm. Gino's pepper farm. I could make it for a good channel too, right? No, please. And came with a nice note from Ralph himself. So good old funk. Yeah. Uh, apparently he recorded on this CD in Cali, actually, back in Feb. So fairly new release. So cool, cool stuff, man. Definitely, we'll get a listen. So let's see what lies within. So we've already got a lot of hot stuff on plate here. Let's see what hides within this book cocoon. All right, still haven't looked within. Um, and if anything's green, I'll just go pop my green screen off and you can see my lovely green backdrop. <laughs> All right, let's look at the first thing here. We got Civil War 2. Two. So Captain Marvel flying at you there with Looks like Spider-Man in tow, of course, and Rocket, I guess, is along for the ride. So, there we go. So, this appears to be issue number four. Oh, Brian Michael Bendis, huh? Alrighty, one down. Brock Vitzkins. Wow, now this is a, um, kind of a, um, blast in the past here. Check this out. 1991, man. It's, <laughs> that's kind of a, uh, gem meets vivid video kind of feel to it. I dig it, man. These were real hooters. <laughs> Jim, there's a deep cut for you, right? And on the back of it, we have Image Comic. Uh, I have another Image Comic now. Uh, Deathmate. Uh, I don't know a number on this. It says Prologue. So is this a pre-number one? I'll have to find out. Ooh, Has kind of a radioactive man feel on the front there, doesn't it? I know no image characters. I couldn't tell you who any of those guys are. Is that Mr. Sinister looking down in there? Or his evil twin brother? Actually, kind of looks like Cable kind of hiding down there, too. But, obviously, a Lee cover, or at least uh, Lee um, layouts. Pretty sweet, pretty sweet. So now I can say I have two image comics in my collection. Woo! There's some hot stuff here. Uh, hey, this guy's paying off! Uh, hey, Okay, this book, 
was so hot back in the day. And this is, oh man, this Ghost Rider 28 was, this Ghost Rider was such a hot property back in the 90s. I should do a video on some of the really hot properties because uh, at this point, uh, Punisher was not quite as over as he used to be, uh, but he was still pretty hot. So he did a lot of guest appearances, uh, but characters like Ghost Rider had kind of taken the mantle as the newest hot property, right? to be spread all over the place like venom and ghost rider were just like the hottest thing going at the time and not to be uh, missing out on the whole bag phenomenon here it is number 28 with a freaking iconic iconic cover Whoa. lots of stuff inside of course and um i can't remember if i used to own this i, I want to say that i did i certainly don't anymore but it's another uh you know cubert andy and joe cover but just amazing and really i don't know how well it's going to come across on the camera here for those who've never seen this before like this outline of ghost rider is actually on the bag itself but just this was such a hot deal man and of course for 250 it better be right expensive stuff back then but the sheen hadn't worn off on ghost rider yet he was still pretty popular and uh, as evidenced by him getting his own poly bag because that a lot of uh Kyle's got that. It's as popular an idea as it was. In Marvel, it didn't get a whole lot of like distribution to other comics outside of like X-Force and things. So, All right, what else we got here? Some great, great stuff here as well. Okay, Punisher 2099. Uh, I'm assuming that the female Punisher here, I don't know if he's taking his stead. I remember um, I hadn't read too far into the series because I kind of stopped collecting around this time. Let's see. I can't remember what year this was. Didn't say on there anymore. Um, my, I guess Morgan's still doing the series too. I know he started with the first one. Uh, I remember there was like, um, I believe he inspired like a whole like militia of Punishers or something, as I recall. So I'm not sure if she's like one of the lieutenants now or she's taking the stead or it's a breakaway. But there we go. So Punisher 29. So that's that's really cool, man. Because I like to uh, read a little further into the series. 2099 is definitely one I should collect all of from all of them, like Hulk and Doom and Punisher. I guess Spider-Man and uh, see how they hold up. Now this one is such a an iconic cover here, and um, man, I've never owned this one. This is well after my time of comic collecting, but this is this is this is a peach. This is uh, Punisher number 102. with uh, everyone's favorite assassin, Bullseye. He was another guy that got really hot in the late 80s, and um, I'm not sure if he was still hot at this time. They started doing all kinds of wacky stuff with him, because I believe they gave him an Andamanium Skeleton as well. He also had a healing factor as well, so he had like three mutant powers. It was really strange, man. And what was really cool it was, uh, he was like a Red Skull, or Red Skull. He was Kingpin's kind of henchman, right? And then, like in the Captain America um, Streets of Poison series, he and Crossbones have a pretty epic fight because uh, Bullseye was paid to kill Red Skull by Kingpin, but he only kills a robot. But yeah, he and he and Crossbones have a great fight, and uh, it was just it's just kind of cool to see when two henchmen collide. But yeah, Bullseye was just really a strange character in the fact that for, out of the blue, man, he just got really popular. He was like Sabretooth, man. It was like there was like three characters around that time that he got hot was just went ballistic for whatever reason. Now one of them I can understand because it was a mutant. It was Archangel when he got his restoration uh, from um, Apocalypse. But it was Bullseye, Sabretooth, and Archangel for a while. I guess maybe because, I don't know, they're all kind of bad too. <laughs> but um, yeah, they all, I guess it was the killer thing. Yeah, because Antiheroes were hot, Punisher was hot. Wolverine was still kind of sometimes killing back then, so that kind of, it kind of made sense. But I'm kind of taken away from the awesomeness of this cover, but it's really iconic, and man, what a selection. See, I guess uh, the entire community knows well of my uh, <laughs> my Punisher fetish, apparently, so I seem to get those in every AOK, -okay, which is great because it's going to help me like reestablish my collection because I still need to get all the Volume 2s. I need to go back and collect. I still have about 20 in my original collection, and of course, most of those are just reader copies, but whatever. So, Ralph, man, I really want to say thanks so much Um saying that you didn't have to do that i thought you were just gonna send me some pepper seeds <laughs> but he actually sent me some full grown peppers what a colorful bounties in there too i'm kind of afraid to get in there i'm surprised the heat just isn't like seeping through the plastic here hey, no, no. It's too hot. 
and of course lots of seeds for next year who knows what's going to be in there with a name like bold badger though i'm guessing they're not wax peppers so <laughs> but yeah man i really appreciate it um it was very kind of you to send and uh thanks for making some great music too i was telling uh you how i enjoy some of the songs on the other album i listened to and if i could ever figure out how to use them on an intro for friday night uh, hangouts, I certainly will. So, uh, yeah, thanks again. And, uh, you know, for all of those out there, make sure to check out Funk's channel. Check him out on Instagram. Make sure to listen to his music and support, you know, kind of support not only like content creators, but artists in their own right. So, yeah, thanks again, man. And uh, truly appreciate it. And can't wait to put these in the ground next year and see what uh, bounty bears fruit. So, thanks again for watching. And thanks again for sending. Until next time, this is Genome sending out his heartfelt appreciation. Out.